Namaste, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tester Speak Season 2 on the Test Chat YouTube channel with your host, Prajesh Dev. Now, today I'm going to be talking to somebody who is responsible for spreading lies. Well, we are going to find out more about what lie, what those lies are, but he is an absolutely fantastic blogger. He is a super, 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 super tester. Uh, he is a wonderful person to talk to, very down to earth, uh, great demeanor. You know, it is always a pleasure talking to him anytime. So with, you know, without any further delay, I want to welcome on my show, Nitin. Welcome, Nitin. Thank you so much, Rajesh. Uh, it's good to be here. I feel like back home with my elder brother talking. <laughs> that is so kind of you. And, and uh, you know, the audience must know that this is what Nitin is. He's, he's always, always so humble, always, uh, you know, uh, making me feel <laughs> better in every conversation. Well, uh, well, uh, Nitin, I have been wanting to do this session with you for a long time. Uh, I mentioned in the introduction about about your blogging and things like that. So, uh, you know, uh, we will come to a lot of stuff that, that you've been doing. But before I get on to that, I want to understand why testing? Why did you choose testing as a career? <laughs> Good question, Prajesh. So, uh... Going to the past, I am an accidental tester, like everyone says. So I started my career as a teacher, actually. So mm -hmm. I finished my electronics and communication engineering. After that, I was teaching students. And then uh, there was a time when I started looking for IT jobs. Uh, so I was doing part-time job as a software developer. I did some sort of support kind of job. And after that, what I get a real opportunity as a job is a tester. So at that time, I didn't know anything about testing. So <laughs> during the interview also, there was many people who did uh, courses on testing uh, sitting next to me. They were talking about black box, white box, and I don't know what these boxes are at that time. <laughs> <laughs> <That's so laughs> and bad. yeah, some, some sort of box. <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> okay, this, uh, what, what is this box? And then um, this interviewer called me in and he started asking me questions related to testing. So to be honest, I was not really aware of what a, a tester's job scope is and all those kind of things. I did some sort of development stuff only. So I was trying to explain him this was what I did during my part-time jobs and all. And I was a teacher. Uh, and then he started asking me questions related to teaching and quest, uh, testing, some, some sort of um, uh, relations and all. And yeah, uh, surprisingly, I, I got the job. <laughs> uh, I don't know how, uh, like along with the ones who did software testing courses and all, I did the, uh, I got the job. And uh, it was my first job actually taught me really well uh, with the concepts, uh, basics. And I was so fortunate to get a good pair of seniors who guided me well. And uh, I guess that is the uh, thing which uh, helped me to continue my journey in testing. Awesome. So, uh, do you see any similarity between teaching and testing? Uh, yes, I, I do see that. So, uh, when I uh, when I teach, I actually try to uh, compare or share stories. So, so that that is my medium of or my way of teaching style. So, uh, I, everything I teach, I uh, try to compare it with stories and all. So, when I started career as tester. Uh, so what I did was similar kind of thing, uh, uh, kind of preaching or kind of storytelling. When I find a bug also, uh, I just go to the developer and say like, uh, to narrate in a way like a story, hey, hey, hey man, so this is how it is and this is how it's supposed to be. And yeah, this is what I'm seeing, uh, what to do next. <laughs> so uh, 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 initial days, uh, I was not a kind of person who report every bugs. So I, get, I just go next to them and talk to them. Uh, this is uh, how it should behave and uh, kind of narrate it as like story. So those, um, uh, I guess those aspect of myself actually made me help to have a good relationship with my developers during that days. 
and only after that uh, i will um, like formally report those bugs and all so those uh, storytelling style uh, with teaching i could compare with testing as well absolutely i mean uh, storytelling is a a big part of 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 uh, testing is what i also feel because if you are able to communicate with people in the form of stories it becomes very easy to communicate not just bugs but during discussions during meetings ideas thoughts can be shared in that way that okay you know you are working on a strategy suppose and you are discussing things with the developer so if you put it in the form of a story saying hey you know what i saw this happening and this is how it shaped out to be but since we are planning this particular activity you know we would want to avoid that situation because that has occurred in the past what do you think okay so so like this make it conversational make it story type excellent thought excellent idea and excellent analogy between teaching and and testing which uh, which is which is very nice now i am um, just taking a moment to highlight something i am a great fan of your way of storytelling as well <laughs> thank you thank you uh, so you see nitin is is a very kind guy as well so <laughs> well uh, nitin but but uh, let me ask you something a little more deeper with regards to that so we can't write stories in jira right when we are reporting mm -hmm. bugs so then what do you do it's good to interact but when you have to be absolutely precise you know to the point in jira explain the thing then how do you change that situation okay so if i am going straight with jira so we have uh, we generally have a template right we should stick on to that so i will follow definitely follow the template which is already there but uh, at the end after providing all the root cause information which whatever things i could find what i will do as a uh, i will like, try to explain the scenario uh, as a user level so there will be one snippet uh, at the bottom following the normal template which is mine uh, which actually helps them to understand uh, what really the cause is which is uh, a great idea and uh, you know i took jira just as an example it could be any tool uh, so uh, one interesting aspect that i can uh, pick up from from your way of of at least reporting bugs in the form of storytelling is that we can still make use of that comment box below to to say okay this is what i am actually seeing and uh, you could still you know put it in a story format there now when i say story you don't have to say okay once upon a time this happened <laughs> no, no yeah <laughs> not the once upon a time kind of stories but it has to be something with the real meaning okay uh, so um now in your uh, testing career you have been in testing industry for so many years have you seen testing evolve as such or you know we test we still test the same way we tested like 5 years ago or 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 when you started testing okay uh definitely testing really got evolved uh so if i think about the past uh when i started i was also uh, amidst a lot of chaos and misunderstandings in the testing uh so i was also thinking like uh, testers job is to report bugs that's it <laughs> <laughs> to find mistakes in someone else's job so that was my initial thought um, but as i said i was fortunate enough to work closely with my developers and all and my colleagues were really helpful to enhance uh, helping me enhance my skills so uh, due uh, due course of that timing uh, i just got to understand that testing is not what i understood before so it is uh, way beyond that we we are uh, we we are sort of a medium uh, which acts as a bridge between actually uh, kind of users and our technical side so we should consider thinking like starting uh, start to think like our users and uh, consider the users behavior and bring that user element or human element of humanal testing kind of thing to our testing aspect 
uh, and then I could see like uh, when uh, I started with test automation. So everything was UI automation. So I, I also thought, yeah, you automation is just UI automation. <laughs> so what, whatever I do, I just uh, automate the UI, just that. And then uh, due course, I, I started to see that there are different layers of testing uh, we could do. We could automate in different layers. We can automate APIs. We can do integration tests. We can do unit tests. That is also uh, automation. And like uh, you also always say, like even doing a macro in Excel is also automation, right? So. Uh, uh, so that uh, changes I could see uh, throughout uh, my career. And uh, now if I look back, the uh, ent it is entire shift for me. So in my current company, the testing scope is uh, entirely different from what I started before. So now we are working closely collaborating with our developers. We are not really testing all the time. So we are helping them to test. Uh, we are coaching them to test. So that is the change uh, I could see. No. I think that is a very uh, uh, good statement, very powerful statement to make, you know, helping the developers to test or, or helping other people to test, which is uh, something that testers don't really uh, do per se. I mean, I am of also of the same school of, uh, uh, you know, not, not the same school of thought, but but uh, probably from the same school from where you started, which is like, you know, testing is reporting bugs. You know, that, 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 that thought process. I also started off like that, okay? So for me, uh, I did development work and then moved to testing. And then, you know, in my initial days, it was all about looking into the application, checking for conformance with the requirements. If it doesn't conform with the requirement, then report a bug. And that's how it continued. But later on, I realized that no testing is much more than just doing that. It is, uh, you know, reporting a bug is just one part of it. So it is not the number of defects, which is making you a better tester. I mean, I used to feel very happy. Oh, I've reported 10 bugs, you know, and, and there are, <laughs> there were days when I, I, I used to be, you know, on cloud nine, because I have reported like two showstoppers. I'm like, now uh, let's see what the developers do. Okay, I have reported to the first office and, and, and then I was like, what am I doing? Am I helping them to solve the problem? Okay, or just trying to glorify myself? Okay, it's, it's, it's not helping. So then I started thinking that, okay, I've seen an issue. Let me just sit with the developer. Let me try and understand what the situation is. Maybe, you know, maybe it's something that I'm missing, you know? Uh, it, it could also be the case and and trust me on a few occasions that was indeed the case that i missed something okay my understanding was a little short of what it should have been so so from that perspective it is very important and 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 what you said is is so valuable nitin that you know once you get into that mode of helping other people to test it is just awesome okay and so when you said that, that, you know, in your journey, you discovered that when you started with automation, you discovered that testing is uh, also through different layers. Okay, you, you have uh, not just the UI, but the API below that, the integration layer or, you know, the unit testing layer. Uh, so uh, did it not, sound very complicated at that point of time that oh my god there is so much to do with with automation what am i yes doing? It, it 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 was complicated during uh when i was hearing it, those kind of things for the first time i felt it like uh too technical for me <laughs> uh but when i started like uh exploring it uh it became fun so uh, initially it is always challenging for all of us, but, but once we are there and start exploring it and once we do it with passion, I guess it will get, we will get used to it. So uh, I know that one of your favorite areas of interest is, is, is API automation. Okay. Um, so I want to learn from you. Uh, how do you begin your journey as an API automation tester? Okay, suppose I, I, I am new to automation and, and mm -hmm. uh, what I've been taught is that, okay, 
UI is the piece, UI is your entry point into automation. What next for me? How do I approach uh, API automation? Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, I would say, uh, okay, let's consider an application. So uh, let's take it in the simple example of logging. So if you are trying to log into an application, uh, there will be, uh, I'm just assuming there will be a several kind of API interactions happening over there. So if you could open up the uh, console, dev tools, and you can see when you try to log in, uh, there will be a post action to the server. Mm -hmm. So that post API call will have a set of parameters, uh, which is a username and password, and it will go back to the server. And the server will return you uh, as a get response whether this user is validated and you will get redirected to some page. So uh, when, when you are doing a UI testing, just think about the underlying architecture or the flow which happens in the background. Or when you are testing something in the UI, you, just, you could just uh, go to your developer, ask them like, what is the underlying architecture behind this? Uh, how the thing actually works? So if, if it is login, how it, uh, what happens in the background? I'm just uh, entering a, a username and password from the UI, but it actually redirects me to some page, which is relevant page. So how you guys handle that? So then uh, they will explain you that there is a post request which is going through uh, in the background and the server will give you a get response in the, uh, and then we redirect with this 302 redirect or something, and then it is redirected to this corresponding page. Okay, so th then uh, it will be sounding interesting to you. So uh, the next step, uh, you will ask them, what, what are the APIs behind that, which you are using in the background? So then they will be providing some sort of documentation and uh, will tell you, okay, this, this is the call which is happening. And this is the next call which is happening. And this is how it works in the background. And uh, so basically then uh, you can uh, go back and then uh, the source, uh, always we will go for Postman. So Postman is the most handy tool when it comes to API testing. So in Postman, you can try the same API call and see how it works. So when you try to post what happens and when you try to get what it returns. So that, that will give you the confidence or technical understanding of your real application or how the real application works. So uh, I would say that is the basic thing which you could do. And uh, coming back to your question, uh, we should uh, interact more with our developers uh, when we try to start some exploring about APIs. So that close collaboration will help us to uh, get more familiarized with the API and the architecture of the application. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I have a follow-up question to that. So you mentioned something that, you know, try and understand what the architecture is and, and what are the APIs involved. So how important do you think uh, that part is? Because when you say uh, understanding the architecture, it could be complex, right? Mm -hmm. It could be complex and understanding what the APIs are. As a tester, why should I care what the APIs are? Mm -hmm. Yes. So... The, how, how, how would you handle that? Uh, okay, so how uh, it like understanding technical stack or architecture helps is, uh, let me give you an example. Okay, uh, we are uh, testing a checkout scenario for uh, e-commerce website. So the normal use case, happy flow, you can check out uh, and purchase the product. Okay, while uh, checkout, actually what happens is there is a delay uh, which is a noticeable delay, but uh, as a tester, what we will think is, okay, our flow is working. So I can check out, yeah. I can purchase successfully. But there is a de uh, delay which is happening in between while checkout interaction that actually impacts your sales funnel. Yeah. So users, uh, when they try to check out, if there is a delay, they will drop by at that point of time itself. Yeah. So what if uh, as a tester, uh, you understand the performance aspect of that. So that is technical. Uh, but uh, if you understand at, during that period of time, how the technical architecture or the performance of the application behaves, we can bring in more value to our business. And that is where I, uh, I can say uh, we as testers should improve and uh, we should uh, uh, voice out. Uh, okay, so this, uh, by understanding our technical stack over these kind of things, it helps us to provide more value to the business. 
right excellent uh, i think i think you made some very good points and if i may just add it is very important as testers that we understand the the technical stack of of the projects now uh, uh, how to do that well very easy there are uh, you know google chrome extensions that are available which you can just just run on your on your uh, website and it will tell you the entire technical stack for example one of the most common ones is is called what runs so if you just run if you just click on that what run on your website if you have that extension and if 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 you have it enabled so if you just run it it will just display that your website is having uh maybe i could just um as i'm talking maybe i could just show it uh um let me know if you could see my screen not yet yeah yes. you can see my screen now so so yeah okay so yeah so this is my browser and uh, so here are the extensions that i have and if you see i have got a uh, webalizer what runs okay so if i just so this is the google home page right so if i just say what runs and it it asked me enter a website i have not entered anything okay because this is uh, uh, the the default page on my the thing so if i just click on say amazon.nl and again from here if i pick it up and see what runs okay so there is uh, Uh, it is asking me to sign okay. in. I don't know why. <laughs> Should not be the case. Uh, anyways, so this is what you call as the demo effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh it should be much easy okay so here you go there is another extension so you have got uh, vaporizer which also tells you that the cdn for this is amazon cloud front and the platform is amazon web services so that's what it tells you okay so every time you want to go deeper you could run any of these extensions and they will tell you a list of uh Uh, tools or technologies that are running your particular website so that is something that i wanted to share uh, so you know i will probably list out these extensions in the description of this video and that should uh, help a lot of testers trying to do this experiment okay uh, stopping the share we will move on with the next question uh, so uh, so nitin apart from testing your other love your love for writing how did you develop that uh okay so i was fond of writing since childhood so i started writing stories um, i participated in several essay writing competitions and all and uh he yeah, got some prizes and all those kind of stuff during schooling days after that somehow uh, somewhere down the line i lost the touch with writing and then uh, what uh, during after starting my career like one year one after one year or one or two years around two years uh, i started writing simple 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 uh, blogs so small small writings uh, which shares about my learnings and those kind of things and i shared only with my friends <laughs> uh, i was not having the courage to share it to a wider audience uh, i started sharing with only with my friends or close colleagues only so they, when they started uh, reading about it and they started sharing feedback i was like okay uh, i guess there is a point which i could start sharing outside 
uh, so then uh, i started a medium page uh, i st started writing articles over there uh, and in between uh, so the storytelling part was all, always there and i love to write stories and well which led me to direct a short film and write a story for that so uh, coming to that non technical stuff and then uh, coming switching back to the technical style so but i still keep that storytelling aspect of the non technical side in the blogs which i write and uh, when i read uh, and all those kind of things and when i feel like it is something helpful for the community i started sharing with others so once getting like feedback and someone feels like it is helpful it gives me the motivation to write more so you have written for a film a uh, short film <laughs> short film and what yeah. is the name of the film uh, it is called ring it's a horror short film uh which we did for the uh, company which we work for uh, internal film festival kind of thing okay <laughs> <laughs> horror, horror. I, i remember that uh, you also mentioned once you are writing a story or something yeah so uh horror definitely not one of the genres that i would i would explore and definitely not doing that <laughs> but yeah i can um so uh, i uh, remember participating once in a uh, in a blog contest not a, not actually a contest but some sort of a, a an event where you know there were multiple writers involved and we had to continue the story so it was like you know somebody writes one chapter and the next chapter is written by another author and like that okay okay, okay. so i remember writing one of the chapters and the feedback was it is too dark okay because okay. the scene that i created it was like people were like okay you've gone too deep into the story and you've made it sound like you know the, you brought out the the villains aspect so uh, so well that it's difficult for people to make a comeback out of it how do you bring the hero from that situation is something that then i said yeah i can continue but then uh, but, but then because it was a continuation somebody else had to do it and <laughs> and then uh, of course uh, they finished it within the next three chapters but i thought that with with the plot that i was going i could have taken it to like 5 6 7 8 chapters you know <laughs> <laughs> make it like a make it like one of those uh, and those uh, you know daily soaps that run on tv nowadays with 1000 yeah, episodes you know 1000 2000 3000 episodes <laughs> <laughs> we could very easily do that well uh, yeah uh, writing film production i mean that's that's something that even i want to do i uh, that's one of the desires i have i want to produce a movie someday uh, at least write for one okay do the do the screenplay actually not 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 just the script but actually do the screenplay so who does what who says what and what situation and what is the facial expression and all all of that you know mm -hmm. that's something that i i really enjoy so <laughs> well but it's it's good so maybe i can uh, you know get some tips from you uh, you know or maybe we could do I, a, i'm just a beginner in that area no, but could, yeah <laughs> we can we can probably collaborate and do that now from the point that you started writing those stories to synapse qa okay this has been quite a journey okay yes. would you want to share some some of the highlights of the journey and how did this happen okay so uh, synapse was uh, a random thought uh, me and my manager was one sitting in office and we were discussing to have a community over here in kl for testing uh, at the same time our cto come to us and told us that ministry of testing is uh, starting a meetup in kl so our community idea just got vanished with that just one saying so we thought okay uh, if we are bringing up with one more community then it's not uh, it, it doesn't make any difference there is already one community which is rising so then i came back on my way back uh, i was reading one of the blogs so uh, in medium okay so uh, in medium when i was reading uh, i was thinking like uh, when i write uh, the proofreader for me is my wife so i always share with her she does a great job at it i can tell you 
<laughs> and she yeah, is the most like way yeah so yeah she she is a good critic actually uh, straightforward cut short and she will uh, straight away say whatever negative to my face itself which will make me sad initially but i will try to make it uh, better next time <laughs> like that <laughs> uh so uh, i was thinking like so what if we uh, in medium if you write you just share it across and you don't have a proofreader to help you read it right and all other blogging platforms uh, nobody have something like a peer review or uh, someone who collaborates with you as a accountability partner who helps you with writing so those sort of things is very rare what if we could start something like that i am fond of writing and what if i could leverage that interest into something which helps the community as well so i i came back home uh, i discussed this thought with my wife and the first expression she had was are you crazy <laughs> you, you you think people will uh, start writing uh, if you launch a platform like that let's see at least we could get someone from my team so that was my response and then i went back to my manager the next day and i said like uh, can we start something like this it, it will be very very much helpful uh, let's start with our team and see where how it goes so then we launched uh, synapse qa with my teammates so my wife and we had three more writers and all uh, and we launched with uh, my wife's article on women's day yeah. so that, that 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 was our launch and then uh after a few like few months uh, we started getting recognition from all the different different platforms and all so then i thought okay this is not a crazy thought uh, people are really interested so th- that was the beginning stage of synapse where it started evolve into a community dri- uh, driven uh, co writing space so it was initially a co writing block space then we changed it to co writing space so we wanted to remove the block part from it and uh, wanted to leverage it into a co-writing space which helps others uh, to write and share and create a empire uh, out of it excellent i mean this was a phenomenal idea and like i was saying previously that that your wife she she is a very good writer so i am not surprised that that she is a very <laughs> good critic of your work because you are amazing yourself and uh, to have uh, you know another good writer at home Uh, you know watching you <laughs> yeah. watching what you're writing yeah, it's always very helpful now uh, one of the one of the most amazing things that you did was uh, the super reads okay and and uh, i thought it was a brilliant idea it was so well executed i mean uh, i was happy to be a part of that it was so well executed and i was like wow man this this guy can think that's that's what i i i actually thought at that moment that he can really think he can come up with such ideas and to make it work so so what was the 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 inspiration behind doing super reads and and what were some of the learnings you had out of the super reads uh, challenge that you did okay uh, uh th- thanks for you to make it uh, a memorable experience actually so without your collaboration super reads wouldn't happen So come on first of all let me let me oh, thank there, you for there, that there were there were so many other people who are uh, absolutely phenomenal i mean i i you know you know in the judging panel you had the likes of prashant you had the likes of of mary and uh, you know those, those they are they are such awesome writers i mean i i, I am uh, you know um, very short on that but thank you i will take that compliment <laughs> it it was a team effort actually yeah yeah and uh, the thought behind super reads um i i guess i shared before so it was a notification which came on 11 11 out uh, uh spreading about um the offers which we could buy, if you could buy something from e-commerce website we will get more offers so 11 11 notification that was catchy so i felt what about doing something on 12 12 so since ours is a co writing space we should stick to the writing concept we cannot go away from that so then um, i was thinking what 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 to do with writing so uh, considering all the events which is happening uh, none of them came up with something for a writeathon we have hackathons 
but uh, there was an uh, something for write a thon which encourages writers to write their stories so uh, I, i thought like okay so let's combine this write a thon concept with 12 tell so 12 tell we will be launching 12 articles with from 12 uh, different authors and then uh, as always uh, synapse have like the crazy thought of coming from me and then there will be a discussion with my wife and there is uh, two more guys enrique and ram so these three guys are actually uh, question bombers <laughs> so <laughs> when i pitch something to them it's like a uh, inverse uh, uh, it's like a, a founder of a startup pitching some crazy thought to the investor and they will be asking tons of questions <laughs> uh so they started asking what what if uh, synapse is just in the beginning stages what if we couldn't get more writers so we you are planning to host this at a global event and what if uh, people won't write so let's try uh, at least uh, when we start uh, sharing this we can ask uh, different communities to support us and then uh, people will definitely uh, think about it if the concept is fresh and uh, people will definitely contribute they want they, they they might be looking for a opportunity since the opportunity is not there they are not coming friend so if we if we could give that opportunity then definitely people will come so what are the risk uh, yeah risks are there uh, as a tester we should also think about risk right so uh, we thought about risk of not getting enough participation and then we look back into the synapse set of writers at that time we we had 12 writers on board luckily so i was sure if no one else is from outside if no one else is coming to write we will definitely have 12 articles at the end uh, because synapse writers will write something for sure so that risk was covered by that part and then uh, what if a competition is going out without any prizes Yeah. Okay at th- at that time we didn't even think about sponsorships or something we uh if you look back if you remember the super risk announcement the very first announcement went out without any pricing structure or something like that yes. and then uh i reached to metal first and uh metal was so much impressed with the idea and concepts and she said our test project will become the main sponsor for this event that was surprising for me okay uh, it's our first event and uh, they are coming up to support us and then after that we got uh, different sponsors and then uh, uh, it was the first event i i didn't even think about the pricing structure how the sponsorship tiers works i didn't know anything about that so i was frequently calling mahesh and he is one of person who i always look up to as him as a mentor so he he was really helpful uh, sharing with me his thoughts about it on the sponsorship how it works and all those kind of things and then i started uh, drafting uh, some kind of uh, documents to share with sponsors uh, that was a new learning considering the risk aspect of the event was another learning and then we wanted to onboard uh, our phenomenal super reads review panel so reaching out to uh, you were the only five which we reach out and uh, these five got uh, like accepted on the very first pitching itself so that was uh, one thing which actually encouraged us to think bigger so after having that review panel we were not having like uh, we announced and for few days the event was not going well not not much entries we were uh, worried whether we will get more entries or something like uh, okay on 12 12 what if we don't get any articles but as days went we started getting more more uh, and more registrations and we end up with uh, 35 plus articles awesome and you know right on the end we were struggling to finishing review for the articles uh, yeah. because we had a short span of time uh, and that was also a new learning for me because when we plan for a bigger event don't uh, go with a random thought and quick a turn uh, cook uh, don't expect for a quick turn around so the time planning should be there so uh, super reads uh, we organized in a way that uh, all the review should happen within one week which is a shorter duration so if when we are coming up with the season 2 we will definitely improve on those kind of aspects of planning so there is a season 2 on the cards yes <laughs> ah, okay <laughs> So see this is how I get people to spill the beans. 
Well, <laughs> well uh, no, for me, uh, you know, as a member of the review panel, I mean, you you mentioned that you know you reached out to five people and in the first pitch the idea was accepted. It was because of this the brilliance of the idea, because a platform providing, uh, you know, uh, people to put across their thoughts, okay, and then get rewarded for it. That concept itself, I thought, was really good. And then you had this, you know, um, this review panel. And, and of course, when I saw uh, the other names in the review panel, I was like, wow, this is awesome. This is elite company. I, I am never going to say no to this. <laughs> this, this. This is a fantastic bunch to be with. And when I read the articles, you know, it was very difficult for us to decide. Very, very difficult yeah. because the level of writing was so good was so good, so much on point. So, uh, you know, some of them were metaphorical, beautifully written metaphorical. They might not have qualified as, you know, the top 12, and but top just reading them was such a delight that people can go and think of such things and, and, and they can actually put their thoughts in such a beautiful manner. It is just amazing. I don't know if you can hear the geese. They are, they yeah, are, I can. <laughs> so it's springtime. It's it's the time for them to to stand on the streets and exactly. block some traffic. That's what they love doing. So all of a sudden, ah, okay. when people are driving around, they'll stand in the middle of the street, and then everybody is sitting there, standing, waiting for them to move away. You can't them, <laughs> you can't get out of your car and hush them away. They won't. They don't listen to you. <laughs> they just stand in the middle of the street <laughs> as if it's some kind of a protest, you know. So. So yeah, the geese are back, springtime. Awesome. All right, Nitin, so um, time to do some fun activity for mm -hmm. the rapid fire time, okay? And uh, okay. questions for you, five seconds to think, okay? And if you have, All right. and if you have a multiple choice question, then you will have to give reasons for your choice. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing this for the first time, so please bear with me. <laughs> okay, I know you are uh, your roots are in Kerala, but I'm still going to ask you: What's your favorite food? Uh, Putta Payar Papada. <laughs> uh, <you> want... <laughs> so, uh, if you mention something like that, it is immediately my. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me something <laughs> or tease? Me? Uh, so, when you ask about uh, like uh, Kerala food, right, it will always come up in Malayalam only. <laughs> no, no, but 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 uh, that is uh, that that is one of the fantastic uh, recipes from Kerala, and I am I am. Uh, how do I know about it? Because I am married to a Malayali girl, so. Okay. <laughs> so then you I, have, might be I do have a, a yeah. I do have a taste of Kerala at home. So okay, okay. Yeah, so I am familiar with that. I am familiar with these terminologies and the kind of food stuff. So uh, I know you are in KL, but still, what is your favorite holiday destination? In Paris. Nice. And which one is your favorite testing moment? Mm. Okay, testing moment. <laughs> five seconds, I took four more than five seconds, okay. Uh, when I started career with Fave, uh, that, that is my favorite testing moment actually. So the starting from the first assessment, which I got from Fave, it was a test uh, to create an iOS application. So. And while I was creating that, I actually wanted to test it and come up with the scenarios. So that was I remember as my valuable interview experience through which I had throughout my career. And I remember the most. Fantastic. And uh, okay. So if there was one thing, one thing that you could probably want to change in your life so far, what would, what would it be? In my life so far, 
uh, okay. In my initial days, I actually, uh, I was, um, you, you talked about the lies initially, right? So I was in a shell during my initial days. I was so comfortable in my comfort zone. Uh, I would say I was a, a frog in the well. I was not looking outside the well. So if I got a chance to change that, I will definitely try to break the shell during that time itself. Awesome, awesome. I, I, I like that, that, that honesty uh, from you, which is, which is very nice. Uh, I was going to come to the lies part of it, but you brought it up. So, uh, so obviously, I want to know a little more about lies. I mean, I, I know about lies. I, I, have, I have heard you speak about it. Uh, I know what it is. I've read about it as well, but I want the audience to understand what lies is and what are the lies that you're spreading? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as I mentioned, I was also in uh, a shell during my initial days. I, I, I didn't want to explore outside and uh, I was not so active with the communities. I didn't really know about the communities and what happens outside. So when it was uh, just before uh, moving to Malaysia, I, I came to know that there is an awesome community for testing out there, which I should start exploring. So once I started getting interacted with different people, uh, I actually started learning uh, more. So uh, that, that was uh, one thing which helped me to break the shell and get out of my comfort zone. And then I moved to Malaysia uh, and uh, I got an opportunity to interact with many of the great faces which I know uh, and whom I look up to always. So that, that was a career shift for me. And then uh, when I started exploring outside my comfort zone, it actually gave me uh, more opportunities and more ways to learn and improve myself in the career. And uh, I would say uh, doing uh, this tester speak also, I'm not a person who talks much uh, and uh, you made me comfortable and I'm talking this much, right? <laughs> so uh, this is also one way of getting out of my shell. So I'm trying this to get out of my comfort zone. So I'm not a person who like to talk much. I'm trying to break that shell and get to interact more. And uh, the lies is um, uh, when I started thinking about writing and all, I was having a self-doubt and imposter syndrome. Uh, I couldn't overcome that. Uh, I was so scared. Uh, I was doubting like if I share an article, which if it is already there, people won't read it. And people is not getting, uh, they won't be getting something new out of it. And what if they start thinking, Nitin doesn't know anything and he start, just start writing something. So I, I was having that self-doubt within myself and I wanted to break it. So uh, this concept of lies then came to me uh, accidentally. I don't know uh, at what point, um, but I started like exploring topic and learning more. And then I started categorizing it. So that is how I uh, categorize my topics. So uh, uh, lies means uh, listening and learning, uh, implementations, experiments, experience, and S means sharing. So L, whatever things I learn and listen to. So I'm an active listener. Uh, I listen when people talk. And those are the moments which give me flashes of inspiration to write next topic. Uh, and I started categorizing that. Uh, so whatever things I learn and listen, I categorize under L. And whatever things I try to implement and uh, try to experiment, and those I categorize inside I and E. And whatever things I feel like sharing, uh, kind of general sharing and general thoughts, I categorize as yes. And once I have that categorization board in front of me, it gives me uh, uh, enormous ways to think. Uh, so uh, my I keep everything track in a notion board. So that is how I organize my things. So when I see that notion board filled with ideas, uh, it actually gives me the confidence to think and write more. So uh, the one part of advice to everyone, uh, just uh, put something visible to you. So then you will start thinking about it. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, that categorization uh, helped me to organize my thoughts and come up with more ideas and help to break the shell. That is uh, 
absolutely awesome and that advice of of keeping something in front of you to keep reminding you that okay this is your play playground you know you go out there and and these are this is what you can do in your playground so if you have a if you have an empty playground with just two goal posts okay you can when when we when we used to go to the ground in in our school it was like that okay then we'd think okay so now we have these two empty this this empty field but there are two goal posts so probably we need a football okay so <laughs> that that thought will come then we go and ask our teacher can we get a football you know a sports teacher and then he would like okay so today you guys want to play football that's fine so take the ball and go but some day we will look at the same field and we would see the cricket pitch in between and we'll say okay so today we maybe we can try play cricket you know and say okay so go and ask him for the cricket kit okay so get the cricket kit and we start playing cricket that's what we used to do in school so 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 that's the analogy that i can draw that okay if you have a board with ideas then or even just a board okay then you would start thinking okay how do i fill this board okay you start with that and then once the board is filled then the ideas are there so you start exploring so so thank you for that suggestion it just opened up this analogy for me <laughs> so yeah. that is fantastic do you have a, a board like that it's not a notion board but i do using mind maps but yeah like you said there is something so i do have something uh, like that so i i keep referring and i keep keep dumping my thoughts in there and uh, you know that's that is how even the test chat began you know in 2016 mm-hmm. uh, one uh, fine afternoon i was all by myself uh, because that time i was uh, i did not have a job i was searching for a job and and one afternoon i got this crazy idea that there should be a platform for testers where we could you know have testers coming talking about things and doing a lot of stuff so i made that mind map and it went into a, a you know my google drive and stayed there forever okay in 2020 during lockdown uh, i thought no it's time to exercise that mind map bring it to reality and that's how the test chat was born because i was having talks with uh, with the other enablers fais sachin and adibayo on a different subject by the way on uh, nothing called manual testing <laughs> but but <laughs> but this thing came by and and we said okay this is a good idea let's go for it and today we are uh, there with more than you know 1800 testers as a part of the community it feels good so so yeah so if you have something in front of you your ideas will definitely get wings uh, well, brother uh, i have i have a question for you i'm just curious to know uh, how you came up with the motto uh, helping others to find their voice well so so i will tell you um, i am a big fan of dr stephen covey okay i have had the opportunity of meeting him uh, once when he uh, was on an india tour and uh, that has actually that that brief inter- interaction that i had with him maybe a minute or so okay that changed a lot of things for me okay uh, and uh, because you could see that man literally exercising whatever he is writing in this in in his, in his books so when you read seven habits of highly effective people you if you want to see somebody actually having those seven habits and practicing in daily life he was that one person who would do that okay you could see it in his demeanor in his speech in his conduct in in the way he spoke with people so so that uh, was a, a moment which really inspired me and then came the sequel of that book the eighth habit and the eighth habit actually is find your voice and help others find their voice that is the eighth habit okay. Okay. so that so i thought this is exactly what we want to do with the test chat this is exactly what we want because if as a tester i feel that i have found my voice and i think i have because you know i make a lot of noise on 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 linkedin especially and i get noticed so it's not voice it's noise sometimes <laughs> but but then, 
<laughs> but then I get noticed. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, fun fact: I have been, uh, and 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 I have no shame admitting this in public, that I have been blocked by a lot of people on LinkedIn. You know, seriously. <laughs> yeah. So so people sometimes get annoyed and say, uh, you know, uh, this guy. Okay, let's block him. Okay, <laughs> then done that. So uh, doesn't matter because uh, you know I will. You know, as a tester, we like to have this. I I call this a skill. You know, uh, to call yes. a spade a spade. Okay, you should be you should be straightforward with things the way they are. Um, of course, we we have you know ways of saying things and ways of conveying our thoughts. That's of course there, but you know, I being myself, I I, I say a lot of things. Sometimes people don't like it, so they just block me, which is which is okay. Okay. Sometimes some of a couple of them have unblocked me at a later point of time. So very kind of them. I don't want to take <laughs> take any names here, but but this is some honest confession. But then uh, you know, so when I thought that I had found my voice, I said, okay, let me take the next step. Let let us have a platform where we can have testers talking. You know, and and if you look at the discussions that happen on on the test chat Telegram group. You know, people just talk, okay. And and the simple rule that we have is nobody is judging, okay. Nobody, there is no yes. judgment being passed, okay. You say your, you put across your perspective, okay. We are not worried about it being right or wrong because there will be perspectives, there will be different opinions. And like I always say that you know the world population is. 7.8 billion which means that there are 7.8 billion brains which means that there is going to be so many thoughts so how can you expect all 7.8 billion to think like you there will be difference of opinion there will be a different perspective right so when that is the case it's okay to just listen to the different ideas let people put in their thoughts okay you have a value system you have a belief system you have a thought process you read stuff you have a your own way of dealing with biases so you put across your point your perspective okay if you think that somebody is surrounded by a lot of biases you know give them the opportunity to come out of the, those biases if they choose not to it's fine it's 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 yeah. up to them right you can't you can't force them and say hey you force know <laughs> This is this is wrong. No, no, I am not qualified or whatever. You can't do that with people, right? Everybody has their. How should I say? Everybody has the right to express their opinion, which is fine. So, so that's that's the idea behind the, the test chat. Thank you for asking that question. I hope a lot of people will be able to uh, relate and uh, think about it and. You know, a request to those who have blocked me, please, if you're re if you're watching me, um, no offense meant at any point of time, you can still unblock me and we can have, uh, you know, a virtual beer if you want. So we can do that. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's something. Well, thank you, Nitin, for, for asking me that question. So before I... Thank you uh, for sharing your thoughts. Before I let you go, uh, I have one last question for you. If... Nitin was not a tester or a writer. What else would he be? A professor or teacher. Interesting. Okay. You have that. You have that aura. You know, <laughs> of a professor or teacher. And in fact, yesterday, uh, you know, um, I, I did uh, the the ask us anything with. Uh, with uh, Naveen, Naveen, yeah, Naveen Mukesh and Raghav. I mean, those three guys also have the same aura, that of a, that of a teacher, you know. And 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 this aura is uh, something that really inspires me. It, I'm sure it inspires a lot of people. I really commend the kind of job that you have been doing. Keep doing more of that, okay. And uh, since you have already spilled the beans. I'm looking forward to Super Reads Chapter Two or Part Two or Edition Two or whatever you might want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> Super Reads 2021 uh, or or whatever. Uh, so I am already excited about it. Uh, so yeah, keep up all the great work. 
keep writing keep sharing your stories we love reading your stories we love listening to you uh, and uh, thank you for everything thank you so much pratish thank you so much for inviting me and part of this show all right uh, enjoy your weekend and uh, let's keep talking you too